what we want to do with Meta. Listen, if you want different results, you have to do things differently. Looking forward to that challenge, that really changed the game. They've done a fantastic job. Bunch of like really talented people. I'm super excited. It's something that helps you see. Take that plunge. When I embarked on the NetApp Accelerator program, as a female entrepreneur, the studies show that access to resources in terms of investors, customers, mentors um, is a challenge and it's a unique challenge to female entrepreneurs. Uh, the NetApp Accelerator program has helped close that gender gap. And I actually think that there will be more women entrepreneurs taking on the startup journey. About the NetApp Accelerator program, one suggestion that I would make, you need to be prepared and very clear in what your expectations are. And as soon as you pass that on, I'm sure the NetApp team will do everything they can uh, to solve those problems because you are going to get access on everything. There is a focus on the Accelerate Her part. There's no like, like difference in terms of the access to resources that you have, right? So that's important. So you, you highlight it, but you also don't have any sort of, you know, uh, extras. It's just, it's perfect that way. That That is how it should be, right? Because most of the time it's a pipeline problem. It's not a performance problem. So you try to bring in more applicants, but then you don't have any discrimination, which is something I personally love about this program. Everyone should come and apply to this, this program. A female founder looking for the right accelerator for you. This is it. Hey, do it now. Otherwise, you know, you don't know when you'll have the courage and the opportunities. I need to put that on my wall. Uh, <laughs> Folks who run the program understand the needs of a startup, so it is extremely well structured. And, and yeah, it opens some new revenue opportunities, you get new insights, you get your narrative right. Uh, there are many reasons to recommend it. This is one of the most comprehensive programs that I have seen. I'm really fortunate to be a part of this top few programs in India. Even in the world, they are one of the best accelerator programs out there. Just uh, telling my uh, you know customers that hey, we are part of the NetApp accelerator program, the complete tone changes. In the way they follow up, they connect and, uh, you know, their empathy in uh, handling uh, startups like us. Be able to do proof of concepts with like customers in different industries for us quite means a lot. And the beauty of working with NetApp, actually, although India-based, we're have, having access to mentors that are worldwide. So in North America, in Australia, in India itself. And so that global perspective has been um, of utmost value to us. The focus that the accelerator forces you to have, it makes you tackle those subjects that you've been trying to avoid um, and, and tackle it head on. And you have such an amazing support network where you can run through your ideas with and, and these mentors are there to challenge your thinking so it's really a growth mindset when you when you're in in this uh, accelerator program our understanding of NetApp was always that it was a very cutting edge cloud AI ML focused tech our uh, expectations from the accelerator was also that it would provide class leading mentorship what we actually experienced in the program was a whole that and so much more tailored to specific use cases and specific challenges we found that to be really insightful and to see that being validated by someone within NetApp and all that, you know, it was like, oh yeah. Benefit from NetApp and I think we've been very, very pleasantly surprised and really put their heart and soul, not just lip service, into providing us real solutions. A sort of 360 degree accelerator, some amazing advice and mentorship on a lot of elements that we didn't know we needed advice on. They have left the biggest impression for us. Take that partnership to the next level. In a startup, if you don't have passion, then it does not matter. Yeah, so that's that's the startup journey for you. You have to be ready to do it. You have to be the one to make the most out of it. Take the leap of faith and keep at it.
Greetings of the season and greetings of the day to everyone tuning in. Welcome to NetApp Accelerator Demo Day Cohort 9 Fuel to Fly. The good people at NetApp truly hope all of you are staying safe and keeping your dreams fueled and flying high this 2022. And what a beautiful way to start the first month of the year, having all of you join us digitally for this one-of-a-kind event. My name is Vineet Vincent and I will be your on-screen master of ceremony for the day. Also, I'll be throwing in a little bit of a beatbox from time to time. It'll sound a little like this. Yeah? And as we begin this event, I'm going to request all of you to use those keyboards, get them clicking, and drop a little hello in the chat box below. Tell us who you are, where you're tuning in from, and what it is that you do from a professional standpoint. As all of you already know, NetApp Accelerator is NetApp's global startup program that aims to fuel innovation by partnering with deep tech startups. NetApp supports startups working on cutting-edge technologies and gives them an opportunity to work on real-life scenarios through POCs. All this while offering best-in-the-class technical and business mentorship along with access to NetApp's network. Also, NetApp Accelerate Her program is geared towards empowering women founders to take their startups sky high. It aims to support women entrepreneurs overcome some challenges unique to them and create an inclusive ecosystem. If you are to visit startup.netapp.in, and I strongly suggest you do, you will find that applications for cohort 10 are already being accepted. This program is intended for global B2B startups that want to explore NetApp expertise in the areas of hybrid cloud, storage, and data management. We're looking for startups specializing in the cloud, the Internet of Things, big data and analytics, machine learning, virtualization, data security, data management, storage, and other related subjects. And continuing our tradition from last year, we're giving back to nature in a small way. For each and every one of you who joins this event live, we will plant one sapling for each of you. So here is a big shout out to all of you who have joined us so far. You will receive an email from the team with your plant details and you can watch the plant grow over the years. So, if your friends or colleagues have registered for this event and they haven't logged in as of yet, please give them a call, send them a friendly reminder and ask them to join us right now. While we wait for a few minutes for people to join in, here's a little question. I would like to ask you this and I'd like to ask you to leave your answers in the chat box below. Which is the infrastructure monitoring and optimization tool designed specifically for today's cloud-based infrastructure and deployment technologies? Your options are A. NetApp Cloud Volume on Tap B. That's option B. NetApp Cloud Sync And option C. NetApp Cloud Insight We'll be displaying the winners at the bottom of the screen shortly, so make sure you type your answers in the chat box and send them in quickly. And now, to officially kickstart this event, I would like to invite Octavian Tanasi, Senior Vice President, Engineering, NetApp, and the executive sponsor of the program to speak a few words at this virtual gathering. Octavian, the screen is yours. Good morning from California. Thank you for joining us for Demo Day, especially at a time when the last couple of years have been anything but ordinary. But when change is the only constant, there is an opportunity, and that opportunity is to harness that through innovation. NetApp has been very successful in delivering an innovation agenda. However, that innovation doesn't just happen. No matter what the project goal or challenge, there are four ingredients that fuel real outcomes in innovation. Here are the essential aspects. Number one, teamwork. To make any idea come to life, team members must collaborate to achieve their shared goal. Success in the tech field requires individuals with different skill sets coming together to build new products and solutions to satisfy customer needs. A huge part of this success stems from listening. Each member of the team offers a unique perspective. And by listening to each other, we can identify new solutions and approaches to address challenges. Number two, learning. 
that's something that never stops. As technologists, we are responsible for renewing and developing our skills and expertise with new tools, agile processes, new technologies, and this is required to be relevant and competitive. Number three, craftsmanship. As innovators, we must do work that stands the test of time through design, APIs, quality implementation, supportability. At the same time, it's important to think about simplicity, ease of use and creating any type of you know, tool or, or solution. And lastly, number four, you have to have a solutions-oriented mindset. Mindset, it's everything. It is important to be in it, to win it, to have the desire, the, the ability to um, overcome adversity. And it, that leads to even more opportunity and more you know, positive you know, change. A solution-oriented mindset, it's contagious and builds positive morale. It, it enables us to see challenges and opportunities to improve, innovate, and win. We deeply value your partnership um, as, as innovators, and I hope uh, that you can take all these uh, you know, attributes and, and hopefully you'll find them you know, helpful as, uh, as you challenge the status quo, as you innovate uh, in cutting the edge areas and um, you, know, you build you know, solutions for the real world. Looking forward to seeing some of the exciting ideas from this cohort. Thank you. Thank you, Octavian. Up next, I would now like to invite Mr. Ravi Chabria, who's the Vice President and Managing Director for NetApp India and oversees the strategic direction of NetApp's Global Center of Excellence located in Bangalore. Ravi, over to you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to NetApp's Accelerator Day. Uh, it's our demo day and it's almost like deja vu all over again. Is it not another spectacular year? for this very amazing innovation engine that we call NetApp. With industry leading partnerships with the world's largest cloud providers, NetApp has once again demonstrated no matter where your data lives and no matter how your businesses use data, NetApp brings it together in this thing we call the data fabric. Our solutions work for our customers, regardless of where the data lives whether it be in Microsoft's Azure NetApp files, whether it be Amazon's FSX for NetApp on tap in AWS, or whether it be cloud volume services in Google's cloud and so many other solutions. We bring it together in this thing that we call the data fabric. So for nearly three decades, NetApp has supported customers like DreamWorks, AstraZeneca, Dow Jones, all very household names, develop their own unique data fabrics built on NetApp. We now know data is going to grow more in the next three years than it has in the past 30. That's an amazing data metric. That's 30 is the almost the entire existence of NetApp so far. So clearly NetApp is just getting started. Our accelerator participants have been a very integral part of this journey with us. For the last four years, 58 of these entrepreneurs have been part of the journey where we've collectively brought the power of this data fabric to our customers. Our customers develop new offerings, reach new customers, develop products, transform entire new businesses with solutions built on NetApp. As the evening progresses, I invite you, come in, take a peek at what we've accomplished. In just the last few months, we've done so much more than we've done ever before. So welcome and thank you. Thank you, Ravi. Before we go into the next segment, it's time to reveal the answer of the first question. The question was, which is the infrastructure monitoring and optimization tool designed specifically for today's cloud-based infrastructure and deployment technologies? Your choices were A, NetApp Cloud, Volume on Tap, Option B, NetApp Cloud Sync, and Option C, NetApp Cloud Insight. The correct answer was NetApp Cloud Insight. And for those of you who got that correctly, look for your names at the bottom of the screen and you can expect an email from us post-event. While you look for your names, we shall move on to another question. 
may I ask you to train your eyes to the center of the screen for this one. Your second question is, Spot, S-P-O-T, from NetApp does the following. Option A, automates cloud infrastructure to ensure performance. Option B, reduce complexity and optimize costs. Option C, provides actionable cloud cost analysis and reporting. Or option D, all of the above. We will be displaying the winners at the bottom of the screen shortly. So make sure you type your answers in the chat box and send them in as quickly as you can. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, people of this event, I would now like to invite the leader of NetApp Accelerator. She plays a dual role and drives site strategy and key initiatives in her role as Director Engineering Programs. She's been an entrepreneur, angel investor, mentor and advisor to startups. Please help me in welcoming her with a huge virtual round of applause. Madhurima Agarwal, the screen is being handed over to you. Good evening, everyone. At NetApp, we take pride that innovation is a part of everything we do. NetApp Accelerator has evolved over the years. And today, as we celebrate the completion of Cohort 9, I am thrilled to share that we've had multiple success stories that our founders have shared with us over the past few months. Of the 58 startups that have graduated so far, six have had successful exits, of which three in the past few months alone. Our startups have raised follow-on rounds of funding and continue strong on the growth path. They are winning accolades globally and are on a winning spree. Cloud Hedge Technologies, a cohort seven alumni achieved AWS migration and modernization competency status for AWS partners. This designation recognizes Cloud Hedge's app modernization platform, OmniDeck, as a proven customer success platform in automating customer migration and modernization journeys. Embodying NetApp's focus on inclusivity and belonging, we have successfully run three cohorts of Accelerate Her and are committed to doing our part in supporting women entrepreneurs in accelerating their journey. Nive, an Accelerate Her alumni, recently won the 5G Smart Railways Hackathon Barcelona and were runners up at Telstra Smart Stadium Hackathon. I am pleased to announce the launch of Spotlight, which is NetApp spot solution tailored specifically for startups. Spot by NetApp is a unique cloud cost optimization and automation solution, and it is now offered to NetApp Accelerator participants as a special benefit. We will soon be extending this offering to our alumni and partners. At NetApp Accelerator, we continue to offer startups an opportunity to do POCs in diverse areas including but not limited to cloud disaster recovery, ransomware recovery, NFTs, building for the metaverse and solving for real world challenges in the deep tech arena. All this and more would not have been possible without our partners and mentors. Leadership and learning go hand in hand. We are excited to have NetApp leaders from across the globe be a part of this journey and contribute to the success of our startups. Let's hear it from them. One thing I realized is the power of relationships that you build over a period of time with your professional network. This has helped me tremendously when, when I took up this mentorship program. The opportunity, the main opportunity to peek into a specific industry that you're not exposed to earlier is, is the rewarding part. It's been a great learning experience and every time I interacted with the team, a lot of suggestions, thoughts were rushing out. I would say that it certainly built a lot of confidence and leadership within me. After going through the one round of uh, mentorship program, I actually realized I have a passion for all these startups. My curiosity, my passion for business, my curiosity are all can be used together on a, and, uh, and a sharing, right? And giving back to the community. All these variables, all these feelings can be clubbed together and I could enjoy that journey. I'm enjoying that journey a lot. The one that comes to me every single time 
is the opportunity to actually think harder and deeper about the customers that I serve. So I benefit from the energy and the insights that each of the startups brings to the program. With regards to mentoring, especially for the NetApp Accelerator program, it's been very um, fulfilling from my perspective because NetApp is actually doing things to help folks in the diversity, inclusion, and belonging initiatives around the world. So I thought it was a great opportunity for uh, me to represent NetApp. Great initiative. It contributes to the startup ecosystem. It helps us in NetApp to learn from what these young startups are doing. So overall, it's it's a great symbiotic relationship. I think we derive a lot of value and, and so do these startups. For me, mentorship is about learning and mutual success. For me, mentorship is not a one-way track where you uh, go and help someone. It is like a give and take where you also learn and you while you try to solve their problem, you also understand and uh, learn from the experiences, the challenges that they are going through and somewhere implicitly you start applying them when you are working in your product. very excited to be on this constantly evolving journey of innovation and are accepting applications for cohort 10. For more details and to apply, visit startup.netapp.in. Me and my team are available on chat and later reachable on email should you have any questions. But for now, let me not hold you back from hearing from our cohort 9 startups. So thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Madhurima. Before I handed this conversation over to you, I had asked a question to which some of you all sent your answers to. Some of you got it correctly. The question was, Spot from NetApp does the following. Option A was, automates cloud infrastructure to ensure performance. Option B was, reduce complexity and optimize costs. Option C was, provides actionable cloud cost analysis and reporting. Option D was all of the above. The answers or the answer for the above question was D, all of the above. For those of you who got it right, a huge congratulations, a big round of applause and a pat on your back. Look out for your names at the bottom of the screen. And now we've come to the most awaited part of this session, the cohort nine pitches. It's been an exciting four months with lots of learnings, connections built within and outside NetApp while all of it boiling down to this very moment on screen right here, right now. Audience, if you have any questions to the teams, you can use the Q&A tab on your screen to post said questions. Those of you looking to get in touch with the startups, you can also use the chat window or drop us an email and we'll help in connecting all of you. Do check out our handbook, which is in the handouts tab on the top right side of your screen. So, without any delays, it's time to get started. Presenting the main event of the day, the eight startups who'll be pitching their offerings, a testament to the power of their solutions and zeal to execute flawlessly. The first startup to present is Data Motive. To introduce them, I would like to call upon their mentor, Amarnath Rampratap, Director, Cloud Engineering, NetApp. Over to you, sir. Hello and welcome to the demo day on the ninth cohort of NetApp Accelerator. My name is Amarnath Rampratap and I'm responsible for the cloud security product line business at NetApp. A business continuity plan is essential for any business to ensure our continuity during the time of crisis. And this requires uh, a number of tools and processes and a very well coordinated effort that is precise and predictable. Recovering from a disaster has always been a complex and a tedious process and it gets even more complex when operating in in the cloud or in a hybrid environment. A good data protection um, and a mobility solution is important to make copies of your mission critical data. And that's not just it. And the ability to be able to restore the infrastructure, the workload and the application in its native state is the key here. That's the evolution of disaster recovery as a service uh, in today's world. And the DR as a service market is valued at $5.1 billion as of 2020 and is expected to triple by 2025. And that's how large the market and the opportunity here is. Moving 
Our operating in a cloud has, does not guarantee availability or continuity. Though the uh, cloud service provider is obliged and is responsible for it. I can say that because we all have seen outages in AWS witness just in the month of December alone. I'm not picking on AWS, but um, what I'm trying to say here is no hyperscaler is invincible. You cannot say that I've moved into the cloud and I cannot have outages or I will not have outages. Thus, uh, having a multi-cloud strategy is important for customers to mitigate the continuity challenges. And um, that is not that very easy because uh, fundamentally you need portability. Portability of your infrastructure, your workload and your application is required to fully benefit on the multi-cloud strategy and the ability to recover in a matter of minutes than hours. And data motive does exactly that. They enable customers to build portability, portability of these applications, workloads and infrastructure. I would call it cloud portability because moving from one cloud to another cloud just happens in a matter of minutes, right? So when it comes to business continuity and disaster recovery, uh, the most important metric uh, we all look at is uh, primarily recovery point objective, but recovery time objective is, an is a very important metric too. The number of minutes to hours your business applications are down is the, is the amount of business that is actually lost. And data motive, what's very cool about them is that they guarantee an under 10 minute recovery time, irrelevant of the size of the workload, right? along with an any cloud to any cloud application. And that's not very unique, but what is very unique about these guys are that our data motive is that they are agentless and uh, lightweight. With that, from uh, an evaluation perspective, if, if customers or if I were evaluating a good business continuity solution, there are three major attributes that I would look at. One is actually the mobility. Second is the recovery SLA and the total cost of ownership. There are many players it's a crowded market. There are many players here. There are prominent players and key players. Not a single vendor would check all these three boxes, but data motive checks all these boxes. With that, let's bring the data motive team live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amma, for the kind introduction of data motive. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to everyone across the world. My name is Yogesh. I'm the founder of Data Motive. And in the next five to six minutes, I intend to present a unique and powerful operating model for enabling business continuity and mobility across the hybrid multi-cloud. Today, the hybrid multi-cloud is a key aspect of every organization's IT strategy. And based on everything we know, the strategy is here to stay and set to grow multifold. There are some serious challenges though. All these different platforms and technologies increase operational complexity. And this complexity in turn is manifesting into service disruptions and outages. Many of us would be aware, maybe even affected by some of the major outages AWS suffered just in the last month itself. Services were down for hours, while some took more than a day to fully recover. And these were just due to human errors or infrastructure failures. When we see the impact of ransomware, it is quite simply unbelievable. These outages are not only costing organizations millions of dollars, but also loss of reputation and customers. Business continuity has never been more critical than before. Government regulatory bodies have been taking notice and enforcing a multi-cloud strategy for their sectors. APRA, the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, has been mandating this strategy since 2018. Analysts have taken it a step further and identified the fundamental need, which is cloud portability. Gartner in its recent report has positioned it as a required innovation trigger. And this is primarily because workloads are not inherently portable. And this leads to the fact that recovery SLAs are hardly ever met. And due to both these reasons, the cost to value ratio is extremely poor. These are exactly the problems we are solving at Data Model. We have invented an engine that enables entire workloads to move seamlessly across and between clouds. Data Motive replicates the data, the applications that use this data, the operating systems these applications run on, their configurations, access controls, everything is replicated from any cloud to any other cloud. And when these workloads are recovered, they are always recovered in the target's native format. Additionally, we are not only mating, but improving the recovery SLAs to under 10 minutes, regardless of the workload size. And all of this at an unprecedented cost to value ratio. By enabling this seamless mobility, Data Motive is addressing all the business continuity, mobility, and DevOps challenges for the hybrid multi-cloud. Scenarios like disaster recovery, ransomware recovery, workload migrations, cloud cloning, 
are some of the things that data motive will make an immediate impact. So double clicking on what data motive really brings to the table. This ability to seamlessly move entire workloads will remove vendor lock-ins and give the negotiation leverage back to our, the organizations. Data motive follows an agentless and incremental replication approach. This enables a zero trust security model with zero performance impact on the production workloads and thus significantly improving every organization's overall security profile. And most importantly, Data Motive provides a 10-minute recovery SLA. This is regardless of the size of the workload. Let it be a 200 GB workload or a 10 terabyte workload. Recovery is always in 10 minutes flat. And all this while reducing the total cost of ownership by at least 300% per year. Making it the industry's first platform to provide secure, reliable SLAs at an extremely high cost-to-value ratio for hybrid multi-cloud. This is data model, changing the way the hybrid multi-clouds operate, bringing the Gartner proposed innovation trigger to today, answering the needs of regulators by bringing an industry first proprietary platform to the market. As I mentioned earlier, the current solutions are incomplete. They can at best get close to meeting only two of the three key evaluation criteria, which are mobility, recovery SLAs and TCO. Data Motive is the only complete solution that offers and improves all three. Organizations no longer have to make a compromise. They achieve freedom from vendor lock-ins, gain the industry's best SLAs, all of this while saving millions of dollars a year. From a business model perspective, Data Motive will be available as a hosted or a SaaS model. We'll be focusing on sectors requiring compliance and service availability. Direct sales is clearly our go-to sales approach, but channels and partnerships will play a key role as well. We have accomplished a lot in a short span of less than a year. Data Motive is ready and deployed at two customer locations. The product is also available in our free of cost sandbox environment, where we have quite a few prospects validating the solution for their needs and requirements. We have already raised seed funding from two recognized VC firms. We also have partnerships in place with VMware and AWS and GCP is just a few days away. We are exploring joint go-to markets, product level integrations with various vendors in this space. And of course, uh, this includes NetApp. In short, we have been very aggressive in developing and deploying the product, forming partnerships and thus creating an excellent baseline to launch from. We already have our core team in place and expanding rapidly. Each team member brings in a complementary skill set and we have known each other for several years. In addition, we are also establishing a very strong advisory pool to lean on to guide us and mentor us through our journey. We want you to join Data Motive. We are confident of Data Motive, its potential, the benefits and value we can deliver to our customers. We are looking for partners who can help accelerate our roadmap and achieve our vision of establishing a new operating model and unlocking this challenge for the hybrid multi -cloud. We sincerely appreciate your time and looking forward to taking our conversations further. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, Yogesh. That was Data Motive. Moving on to our next startup, Fabric Space. And to introduce them, I would like to call their mentor, Manish Thakur, Principal Product Manager, NetApp. Over to you, sir. I'm Manish Thakur. Uh, I'm a Principal Product Manager in the Cloud Volume Services business at NetApp. I've had the distinct privilege of being part of NetApp's innovation journey over the last 19 years. I've had the opportunity to conceive of new products and bring them to market. Prior to that in engineering, I've also had the opportunity to implement solutions to customer problems and, and deliver them. So mentoring Fabric uh, was, was unique in terms of, it allowed me to bring to bear the perspective developed over my varied experience. Fabric is working on a very exciting problem. Uh, they are working in the space of the metaverse. And as you can imagine, uh, the possibilities for them are infinite. So they are in the process of, uh, rather they are in the business of creating uh, digital assets and uh, interactive experiences around them. I'd now like to introduce uh, Puneet Badrinath. He is the founder of Fabric. Uh, he he has led a very exciting journey so far, and I'm sure he'll go places. Over to you, Puneet.
Hi everyone, I'm Puneet. I'm the founder of Fabric. I hope you're all safe and well. Thank you so much for making time. Let me start by stating the obvious. Everything and everyone in the world will be on the metaverse over the next few years. In our minds, it is very clear uh, what we'll be doing in the next five years. With a pair of glasses, we'll be in a web store looking at products rather than browsing through or scrolling through a smartphone or even experiencing a movie looking around rather than watching it on a screen. But what is more challenging is it, it's very hazy on how we'll get there. The path to getting to that future is complex, time-consuming, and very expensive, or it seems like it today, until Fabric, of course. So Fabric helps businesses, individuals, enterprises create their own metaverse in minutes without having uh, to deal with complex lines of code, without having to deal with hassles uh, by using a no-code platform. Fabric essentially uh, enables people to start transitioning into a 3D first world for specific use cases um, across multiple sectors. And I'm going to talk about some of those right now, just to uh, give you an idea of the depth of the width of capabilities of the platform. Uh, I'm talking specifically about instruction manuals and three sectors and how they've adopted Fabric over the last few uh, over the last few months. Starting with assembly lines, this is a customer that assembles a lot of uh, complex uh, aircraft parts that needs to be produced in volumes in bulk and needs to be accurate and needs to be shipped. Uh, today they're using it with PDFs. It's very clear that it's pretty complex and time consuming. They're not able to achieve the right level of volumes and the quality as expected. Of course, they can transition into 3D by using Unities and the Unreal. And of course, they use CAD CAM tools. So they're very familiar with 3D, but the challenges composing these workflows, depending on vendors, make, making sure that they understand and appreciate the effort that is being put as a challenge. And everything becomes expensive. Every bracket, they have 500 brackets. So transitioning that becomes really, uh, really, really difficult until Fabric, of course. So they essentially take their own 3D content, put it on Fabric, use drag and drop to create a workflow and distribute it really easy really quickly uh, they're able to scale as well. And of course it's cost effective. The second use case is in reporting specifically for aircrafts. Um, to expand a bit more, you'll see a tiny little red dot on the right wing uh, that indicates there are damages on the right wing. Now you don't know how many damages, where are they? How deep is the scratch? What kind of damage is it? Is it a dent? Which part of the wing is it on? Is it right next to three inches next to the engine or is it five feet after the uh, engine or so on, underside or overside, whatever. So it becomes really difficult to put those specific points on uh, on this image. 3D, it is really valuable. Transitioning with existing 3D tools becomes difficult because every transaction is a cost. You're dependent on vendors to translate your findings into something that's 3D. And of course, for every different aircraft becomes challenging. With Fabric, of course, you start with a 3D model, put the pin in the exact location where there's a damage. And of course, you add a box with its descriptions, images, voice recordings, what have you to give the field teams, the maintenance teams, an idea of what is wrong with the uh, aircraft, where is the damage, what do they need to look for. Uh, the third one is in a completely different world. It's uh, oil rigs uh, where you have remote oil assets, which are very expensive, hard to maintain in hostile environments. And to monitor them to ensure this productivity is high, you're looking at 2D screens, which we replace with a 3D uh, overlay of the oil rig so that you have an idea of what asset is performing at what level. You have this 3D overlay with the real-time data that's coming from the field. So you get to know what asset is it, what is critical. You can drill down to individual assets so that you can perform better maintenance, share this knowledge with the field folks who can follow instructions to resolve any problems. At the end of the day, if you're stuck, the field folks can take their phone, just place a call to a remote expert who can assist them in solving the problem better as well. So Fabric creates digital twins for products, processes, and people that makes it easily scalable and enables businesses, enterprises to be 3D first. Now the value is Fabric is a, a no nonsense platform, is a one platform, one stop, one stop solution for multiple use cases across sectors. Customers need not depend on various hardware vendors, various uh, collaborative tools, et cetera, to achieve this. Uh, while I talked about instruction manuals, we've seen multiple use cases outside of those as well, like user manuals for luxury products, like simulation for aircrafts, medical device diagnostics and maintenance and so on. <coughs> More widely, Fabric 
we've seen multiple use cases for fabric across use case, across multiple sectors and still we're just scratching the surface so there is a huge potential and every sector honestly will want to transition from a 2d screen into a 3d first ecosystem as soon as possible fabric allows customers to build quickly using the no code platform uh, it allows people to consume uh, the experience consume the metaverse where everything is connected and consume it on any device and hence we allow our customers to transition scale and distribute quickly we've grown about 400 percent over the last 12 months and we've seen uh, interesting competitions where we've been a part of and we've been fortunate to win a few of them as well as you can see customers are across multiple sectors uh, while where the market is huge, we're starting with the digital workplace market because that itself is substantial. And even there, we're focusing on a tiny little portion called digital work instructions just to get a foot in the door so that we can go wider and deeper in that uh, sector going forward. Uh, this is a quick summary of the team. I'm Puneet. I founded Fabric four years ago. And uh, along with me, Srini is helping me on sales and Bhavish, who's our lead investor on a previous round, he's helping on marketing. We are raising $1.6 million primarily to consolidate uh, uh, our uh, product development efforts as well as expand to other geographies. Uh, I'd be happy to answer more questions, more than happy to connect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Puneet. That was Fabric Space. Moving on to the next startup, I would like to call Spectrum Analytics. And to introduce them, I would like to call their mentor, Edward Shepard, Senior Director, Sales, NetApp. Over to you, Shepard. My name is Ed Shepard. I am the Senior Regional Sales Director for the High Tech region. Uh, my team and I have responsibility for 12 accounts that are considered strategic to NetApp. What I found fascinating about Tobago and his organization, Spectrum Analytics, they were very focused on trying to bring you know, new technology to Southern Africa, where they just uh, really behind with regards to their journey to the cloud. And uh, they were trying to figure out how they could help customers or prospects in Southern Africa make this journey to the cloud. And of course, that aligns very well with the NetApp strategy. What we're trying to do for our customers is we transform our, co our, our company to a cloud company, software company. I give you Tobago, the founder of Spectrum Analytics. Take it away, Tobago. Good morning, my name is Tavoko Mohalemang and I'm here to pitch for Spectrum Analytics. In order to thrive in the digital economy, enterprises need to adapt. And organizations that are thriving have managed to derive high returns on investment from their data assets by creating business value from their data assets. And data is everywhere for everyone to leverage the same way as well. And it is growing fast, sitting and generated by different types of IoT devices, sensors, equipment, apps, system logs, and emails. And everyone has access to this digital resource. Paradoxically, only 75% of all this data, like of this data remains underutilized within enterprises, driving up costs, creating compliance and insurance risks as well. And this is a similar case across the world. And it's especially critical in Africa where the, digitals, um, digital, uh, the continent's digital maturity is still quite low. I'd love to share that through a couple of use cases. We currently have a client, More Power Investment, whose business continuity is under threat because of negative customer reviews, uh, low operational visibility, low cost efficiencies, and high security risks. And this is all due to manual and paper-based processes, siloed line of business systems, and data and applications sitting across different environments. You cut across all industries locally and in Africa from banking, mining, telco, energy, public sector, they all share the same common challenges, siloed data and missed opportunities to create ROI from the data assets. And they all have the same goals as well, to lower costs, improve productivity, mitigate risks and increase revenue. But what do they all have to do though? We provide a digital innovation blueprint 
to move organizations from low ROI to high ROI so that they can have like, take that unused data, underutilized data, invisible data, and put it like an, on a driver, as a driver to derive uh, digital value from that data strategies so that they can enjoy the benefits of managing that data to become an asset for them. A spectrum analytics, that's a problem we want to solve for organizations to move them from low ROI to high ROI through custom data management solutions to simplify, secure, and avail data to drive analytics, automation, and BI workflows to create business value. We leverage NetApp's leading data management solutions to extract business value from data. And through our Technology Alliance partnership with NetApp, we offer, we have access to sell, uh, market and technical resources from NetApp to help us leverage on these emerging opportunities. And we move from strategy to architecture to development, pivoting on data management to enable workflows like analytics and AI, cybersecurity to protect the data, process automation and cloud application development on managed cloud services as well to drive business strategy. And we want to achieve this across uh, all the hyperscalers as well. Business model is quite simple. We do consulting and build, deliver bespoke solutions. We sell to businesses and we also sell to government. And the market is actually quite large and the global market is forecast to be worth 165 billion in 2026 with a cumulative annual growth rate of 9.5%. And I know that definitely in Africa is a green market. The opportunities are immense because most of the, much of the market is saturated at the moment. We have competition as well, but they are only focusing on specific data byproduct workflows. And they also don't have access to NetApp as we do. We have made great traction over the years since our formation. We have since incorporated in Botswana and South Africa, and we have had paying customers across different uh, sectors from banking, uh, regulatory bodies, insurance, and uh, academia and research. And this year we hit a, mark, uh, a revenue target of 1 million pula. We're a business with a heart and we realize that data can also transform communities and we have projects to, uh, for that uh, to create uh, impact in our community. We have a product uh, where we're using data to connect vulnerable citizens to social protection programs. We're also looking to use data to address uh, blood shortage challenges in the country as well. We're confident to deliver because we have a multidisciplinary team that is eager to learn and willing to stretch itself through net, the support that we hope to get from NetApp. And in order to take advantage of Africa's unsaturated market, we'll work with NetApp over the next 18 months to do POCs, uh, build our own technical capacity to deliver uh, data management solutions across different platforms, and go on joint marketing and sales uh, in the continent as well to create value together. In order to do all that, we need funding, and we're looking to raise 600 thousand US dollars for a runway of 18 months to allow us to build our capacity and develop products, marketing, administration, and sales so that we can move all, take advantage of these organizations uh, challenges and be able to move them from low ROI to high ROI through our product offering. And we believe by doing that, we'll be contributing to the fall of underutilized data across all organizations through data-driven innovation for business value. Thank you. Thank you, Spectrum Analytics, and thank you, Tibogo. We're moving on to our next startup. Taking over the screen is NetObjects. And to introduce them, I would like to call their mentor, Priyesh Ramaya, Senior Director, Engineering, NetApp. Over to you. A very warm welcome uh, to all the participants of the demo day. Uh, I'm Priya Shamaya and I lead the central regression team uh, called Caesar. This team is responsible for delivering 50 plus releases per year across multiple product lines. And to deliver this payload, 
the CESAR team does a fantastic job of uh, connecting and collaborating with 100 plus managers across NetApp and executing 2 million tests every week. NetObjects is a visionary startup and offers digital asset management as a service. They help the customers to unlock the value of their assets and monetize it. Today, NetObjects has 12 million digital assets on their platform and 20 million users across multiple industries across four continents. Very impressive. I would like to personally thank the NetObjects leadership team, Ram, Harish, and Madhu. And with that, I would like to invite Raghu to share more information about NetObjects. Hi, my name is Raghu Bala. I'm the CEO of NetObjects. We are a digital asset as a service platform. We live in a world of digital assets and NetObjects gives these assets superpowers. So before we get into what NetObjects does, let's just quickly take a look at the landscape. In the 90s, we had SAP, which revolutionized the manufacturing industry, industry using its ERP management tools for resource planning. Then came PayPal, which changed the landscape for e-commerce storefronts by providing them pay payment systems. Uh, CRM systems uh, from Salesforce changed the space for uh, enterprises so that you can track customers. In the same vein and same way, NetObjects helps enterprises manage digital assets using its digital asset as a service platform. The platform itself is built on top of blockchain and blockchain as a technology is changing the landscape and how businesses are conducting their, their operations across multiple vertical markets across the world. And the problems of the 90s are manifesting themselves again, where we have a set of fragmented, unstandardized tools uh, that are in the mix. So NetObjects is planning, has built a suite of tools to solve this problem using a single platform. Our platform does the building, integration, tokenization, de deployment, monetization, and monitoring of assets. We break assets into four groups, digital assets, which are video, avatars, art, and so on. Real estate, cars, merchandise, memorabilia fall under physical assets. And dynamic assets are assets that you have to measure, such as energy, carbon credits, and so on. And these asset classes, once you tokenize them, they become either non-fungible tokens or fungible tokens wrapped around with a parametric contract, and they fall within the realm of financial assets. So what makes NetObjects different? We are a omni-channel platform that works on web, mobile, OTT, and metaverse. Uh, we are a set of blockchain experts, uh, well regarded in the industry. I'm an MIT Sloan instructor for AI and blockchain. We have a team of experts in our board of advisors from many uh, well-known industrial uh, uh, companies in the industry. And our platform uh, serves uh, customers in four continents, and we are backed by Liberty City Ventures of New York City. Now let's look at the platform more closely. Our digital twin management platform is called Neo, which takes an asset and makes it into a digital twin. The next step is to authenticate the, the asset to make sure of its provenance and whether it's genuine and so on. Once the asset is uh, authenticated, the next step is to tokenize it. And that's where our Trinity component comes in. A tokenized asset then has to be sold in a storefront or marketplace. And that's what our Artemis component does. And finally, TrueDocs provides the real-time contract, man contract management component of our platform. These five components uh, make up our platform and it sits within a stack. And this diagram shows how it falls within the overall architecture. So at the lowest layer, you have the infrastructure layer, which is where AWS and Azure play, uh, where the cloud platform play. Next comes the network layer where you have Ethereum, Hyperledger, EOS, and Solana and other blockchain platforms. And then at the top layer, you have the applications built by the enterprise. But there's a chasm between the application layer and the network layer, and this is where we fit in. We provide tokenization, smart contracts, digital asset management, actuation, rules engine, and other components necessary for enterprises to build these decentralized applications.
The challenges typically that enterprises face are there's no single source of truth, there's no fair exchange of value, a lack of transparency, lack of liquidity, uh, the pricing models are opaque, and, as, and also uh, funding mechanisms are not as easily available. Our platform enables all of these problems to be solved with a single solution. A quick example would be gem identity in the um, market for diamonds. So diamonds are a very illiquid asset and we've got $6 billion worth of diamonds on our platform. And we provide NFTs for each diamond with a GI certificate embedded in the blockchain with the color clarity and cut of every diamond. And it shows the ownership history of the diamond itself. The total market size is about 465 billion for our plat uh, for the spaces that we are um, going after, and of which we can easily uh, attain $2 billion uh, of the market. And we are focusing on smart cities, media, and supply chain. Our revenue streams are threefold. Uh, one is uh, we charge a platform fee. Second is for any transactions that occur in our platform. And then finally, customization of, of fees in the form of setup fees uh, for the use of our platform. In terms of traction, we've got 12 million assets on the system, touching about 12, 20 million end customers across four continents. And we've got partnerships with large companies such as Accenture and NTT Data. <clears throat> uh, in terms of financials, we raised $4.6 million to date and with a Series A round plan for the end of uh, next year, beginning of 2023. As far as the management team is concerned, we've had three prior exits. I am a uh, uh, former Yahoo and Pricewaterhouse exec. We've got other execs from Samsung, Tata, Microsoft, uh, Nokia, and, and so on. On our board of advisors, the ex-CTO of Broadcom, CIO of Tesla, and executives from IBM, <clears throat> Siemens, McKinsey and others. Thank you, and I can take your questions at this time. That was NetObjects, and thank you, Raghu. The next startup is ecommerceinsights.ai. To introduce them, I would like to call upon their mentor, Venkateshwara Koe, Director, CPE NetApp. The screen is yours. Uh, my name is Rao Koe. I've been part of NetApp for about a decade now. I manage the continuous product engineering group uh, from Bangalore. We're a team of about 100 people in Bangalore uh, managing the customer escalations. And we are the first line of defense for any customer issues coming from the field. Let me introduce you uh, one of the startups, e-commerce insight. Uh, their founder Ruby Singh uh, here with us. E-commerce insight helps customers turn voice of customers, like user reviews into actions that can directly improve the product. Ruby Singh will give us with more details. Welcome everyone. My co-founder Sanjay and I are building ecommerceinsights.ai and together we help brands sell more, way more with AI powered e-commerce review insights. Sanjay and I are second time founders. We bootstrapped our previous SaaS business to multi-millions in ARR and had a successful exit in the e-commerce space. We've teamed up again to recreate the magic, bigger and better this time. And the problem we're solving is huge. Simply put, low ratings equals no sales. Nobody buys a product with low ratings, regardless of the brand behind it. The problem is huge, but the opportunity is even bigger. Low product ratings are an obvious problem for brands, but that problem gets even worse as the minimum ratings needed to compete in marketplaces like Amazon continue to rise. Even the slightest drop from a four to a 3.9 rating can be the death of a product online. Conversely though, what happens if a brand is able to increase its rating for a product? Studies tell us that even a small increase, like going from a 4.2 to a 4.4 rating can increase revenue by 37%. And that in a nutshell is why brands love our solution. We not only prevent the threat of having their products delisted online, but we are also there to help them increase ratings and revenue by allowing them to tap into the voice of their customers. This is how our solution helps brands sell more. Let's take an example of a specific Nike sneaker. Our platform, 
monitors hundreds of market sources like Amazon, Walmart, and Shopify. Within minutes, our AI reads millions of unstructured reviews like a human would. In this example, our AI is reading reviews for the Nike sneaker we selected. Our AI then identifies the attributes that have an impact on product rating. For example, does the sneaker feel good? Does it even look good? In our case, durability and support are negatively impacting the ratings for this particular sneaker. And this information empowers everyone in an organization with the voice of customer, from the product development team who works on the next generation of sneaker, to the e-commerce team who updates content on product listings. Our solution has viral appeal across teams, and here's where it gets even better. A brand uses us not only to get details on their own products, but also to gain insights into their competitors. So as Nike, I can get the scoop on competitors like Reebok or Adidas or New Balance. In fact, Nike can get insights on the entire category of sneakers, and that's priceless. Traction-wise, we're onto something very big. We're currently at $210,000 in ARR, and we only just started selling in September. Our customers are large global enterprise brands like Energizer, Panasonic, and P&G. Our business model is SaaS, and we're targeting an ACV of $50,000. We've had over 350% growth in just three months. We've built a powerful AI-based insights as a service platform that helps brands improve product quality and customer experience. It helps them innovate faster and ultimately sell more. Our deep learning-based NLP AI helps brands understand what reviewers are saying about their products, the competition, and the market at large by aggregating, analyzing, and visualizing review data. The market opportunity is huge. Every team in every consumer brand on the planet will benefit from and need our solution. Now's the perfect time for ecommerceinsights.ai. In 2021, 100,000 brands launched on Amazon US alone, and that's just one marketplace. Brands need to find a way to differentiate with global competition. Brands are just dying for the information we give them. We've assembled a fantastic team with everyone having experience in e-commerce to data science to deep learning and transformer-based NLP. We're looking to partner with companies that share in our vision for building the future product quality score. Join us in our journey. We're ready to increase our sales, scale up this team, and build a unicorn. Thank you. Thank you, ecommerceinsights.ai, and thank you, Ruby. Moving on to our next startup, Firevisor. And to introduce them, I would like to call upon their mentor, Shivakiran Parabhatini, Director, Engineering, Netta. Over to you. Hello, I'm Shiva, mentoring Firevisor Systems as part of NetApp Accelerator Cohort 9. At NetApp, I lead an extremely talented engineering organization, developing SAN and NVMe storage solutions, and make enterprise operations simpler through application data management. A fifth of all jobs created in the world are in manufacturing. Factories require an army of human inspectors to make sure no fault escapes the production line. And process control engineers must constantly tweak and monitor machines. Quality loss, which includes process defects and reduced yield has a huge impact on production line efficiency. When we apply all these challenges to a high volume manufacturing company, it's hard to scale, be consistent and predictive at the same time. In a world of chip shortages, and production backlogs, how can we increase the production line efficiency and reduce the quality loss? With a vision of creating self-aware factories powered by their own data, Firevisor AI enable engineers to proactively solve the production line quality issues. With that, I'm excited to introduce Ruby Singh, CEO of Firevisor Systems. <music> We are Firevisor Systems, and we are creating self-aware factories through artificial intelligence. High-volume manufacturers lose up to 40% of their sales revenue to defective parts. Just the semiconductor and solar industries 
lose $65 billion every year because of this. So why is it so hard to prevent defects? The first reason is that factories produce terabytes of data, but the only tools engineers have to analyze this data is spreadsheets or basic statistical tools. Engineers end up spending 37% of their time manually cleaning data before analysis can even begin. The second reason is that process control is extremely reactive. Engineers take three to six weeks to find the root cause of a quality issue while the defective part is still being made in the line. The third reason is that a lot of monitoring that hap happens in factories today is manual. It becomes extremely hard for line people to identify which are the true versus false alerts. In fact, they deal with up to 40 false alerts per line weekly. So how does our product help manufacturers? FiveWise's AI makes data explorable. It turns factory data into a form that humans can understand. Instead of manual monitoring, we provide cognitive monitoring. Our AI learns how a factory operates and raises alarm if anything abnormal happens. Instead of reactive process control, we aim to provide proactive process control. Because our AI has learned from a factory, our monitoring can help fix faults before they even happen. Now, let me tell you about our product features that enable this. First, we capture quality data through our AI-based defect detection. Next, we make this data explorable on our analytics platform. This is where data from multiple sources is automatically cleaned, organized, merged, and augmented to produce, ac to produce actionable insights. Next, we use all of the data collected to learn and monitor anomalies in the line. Finally, we combine all of this with the root cause analysis of the problem as validated by the line engineer. This allows us to build regression mo models which predict faults before they even happen. We are the first Singapore company to build an automated AI defect detection and analytics platform for manufacturing. Our defect detection is the best in solar. Our defect analytics is the only one of its kind automated analytics platform that also enables prediction capabilities. Our customers say that we have become indispensable to their line. Our equipment partners say that the results from FireVisor are in another league and it's unlike anything that they've seen in the market. This is a short clip from one of our customers' factories in India. Before FireVisor, they were struggling with a very high defect escapee rate of 14.3%. With FireVisor, that is now reduced to 0.148%. That's a staggering 99% improvement and it continues to get better. Another one of our customers has a solar factory in Singapore. Before FireVisor, they had to deal with 70% defect data being false. Such high misclassification rates made engineering analysis impossible. Enter FireVisor's platform, we now save them 8,000 in engineering hours and 600,000 in labor and scrap cost every year per line. With the huge value that we create, it is no wonder that we are now analyzing 1.2 million products every single day. Our user growth has been linear and has 10x in a year. Our revenue grew by 362% in 2021, and we now serve more than 25 large enterprise customers. Our customer churn has been zero. With the value that we create at each step of the product, our customers don't leave. Manufacturing analytics is a $8.15 billion opportunity, and it's growing at 55% every year. And we are the best team to capture this opportunity. I'm Subhi, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Firevisor. I have spent years improving production lines for industry giants like Seagate and Micron. And I have built automation systems that save 1,000 man hours and up to 80% in cost. My co-founder and CTO, Long, has built machine learning models that analyze millions of transactions for outliers and design data pipelines that scale to tens of billions of requests per month. Our industrial advisor, Pi, has C-suite level experience of 30 plus years across multiple industries. Our enterprise sales advisor, Matthias, has built bootstrapped companies that is fast becoming the new standard for performance marketing. And he has himself built sales engines for multiple millions in ARR. We also have teams dedicated to machine learning, analytics, and business development in Singapore, Vietnam, India, and the Philippines. 
we are raising 2.4 million for the next phase of our growth at this stage our aim is for 40% of the solar manufacturing companies to be using firewiser product and to acquire our first 20 customers in semiconductors electronics and automotive before our series a for multi vertical expansion if you want to build self aware factories of the future come talk to us thank you thank you firewiser thank you surbi moving on i would like to call upon continual engine to introduce them i would like to call upon their mentor shaji joseph director engineering netap over to you shaji i am saji joseph director of engineering at customer experience office responsible for predictive analytics and ai ops as part of netap active iq portfolio my focus is to help customers detect and avoid issues in their data centers by applying ai and analytics on the telemetry data sent by our deployed systems in their data centers we also help customers automate solutions by applying ai of techniques when i was introduced to continual engine i was impressed with the fact that they have a well developed and matured ai engine that can automate conversion of complex diagrams and tables etc to readable text it can do a lot more however we at netapp were challenged with a similar problem when we wanted to consume documentation and kb articles for automating remediations continual engine had already marked success with math and science topics so we did our experiment with our documents to see how well their engine recognized typical software and computer related collaterals i would admit their work and their ai engine really really impressed me with that i am pleased to introduce and welcome mousmi kapoor founder and ceo of continual engine to the netapp accelerator demo day thank you hi everyone i'm mousmi kapoor founder and ceo of continual engine and i'm thankful for this amazing opportunity to share the story of continual engine with you Machine learning has come a long way. It's amazing how machines can read, recognize and interpret information from images, video and audio. Thanks to recent developments in AI and machine learning technology, these applications are becoming more and more mainstream. These capabilities are propelling our world forward, driving business efficiencies automation and new opportunities worth billions of dollars but machines still struggle to correctly read and interpret complex images containing graphs mathematical and chemical equations statistical research and business data and financial statements if machines could interpret this complex image based content quickly and accurately they would enable revolutionary new applications and usher the next generation of ai based automation if machines could do this it would create unprecedented support for the 1 billion people with visual disabilities around the world who by the way have a spending power of over 6 trillion dollars and whose problems are receiving increasing attention by policy makers it would also save billions of dollars spent on tagging images with alt text for search by ed tech companies it would change the game for learning apps like photomath which despite being very popular with 250 million odd downloads still struggle with image rich questions and offer manual tutor support for that it would save tens of billions of dollars spent in laborious and error prone manual analysis of accounts by auditors and finance personnel it will be done eventually but wouldn't it be great if all of this could be done today well welcome to the future we have been doing all of this and more for the best educational institutions in the world this is the next big leap in ai based automation that we spoke about we are transforming learning and accessibility using ai 
We are a four-year-old company guided by 20 years of experience and expertise in technology, products, and learning. We are on a mission to transform content for more equitable learning, greater accessibility, and exponentially improved efficiency. So Continual Engine is the Sazam for complex image-rich content. Our proprietary AI engines automate the interpretation of complex images like this physics diagram shown here into an English language description that's more accurate than even an expert would be able to describe. Now let's see how it works. Let's take this graph. How does our machine process this graph? First, it identifies the axis, then it identifies the plot, then it identifies the key uh, salient points of this plot, like the entry point, exit point, and intersection and inflection points. And then it stitches all this information together into a English description. Our AI engines can extract features from images like this chemistry diagram with a click of a button to power learning solutions, which could not have been imagined earlier. And we can convert non-interactive images of accounting tables into editable Excel table or HTML or a long description automating time-consuming and error-prone human analysis. So we have two key products. Invicta, a vision AI platform for mathematics, chemistry, physics, tabular, and economics images, and PREP, which is a platform that automates the tagging and digitization of documents such as PDFs, and is a powerful and easier to use and more efficient alternative to tools like Adobe Acrobat. Our business model is SaaS plus services. We have a current ARR of $650,000, and customers with a high lifetime value of eight to $10 million. We grew our revenues 3X in 2021 to $750,000 and are projected to grow 6X to a revenue of $4.5 million this year. The TAM is massive and the serviceable market is a few billion dollars. So we spent the last couple of years building and optimizing our automation capabilities for K-12 and higher ed. This year, we plan to scale up by increasing the share of wallet with existing customers, add newer customers, and then use our APIs for new use cases and expand to other markets like healthcare and finance. We are currently in the process of securing a Series A funding uh, of five to $6 million to turbocharge our revenues to 10X. This will be used for business development, marketing, continued product development, and customer support. We've received a lot of interest from investors and are looking to finalize a lead investor for this round. And finally, we have a very strong team based out of US, and in India, who are experts in technology, product, and learning space. Thank you for your time today, and a big thanks to the NetApp Accelerator Program for providing me with this opportunity. That was Continual Engine, and that was Mausumi. Moving on to our last startup, Neuropixel.ai. To introduce them, I would like to call upon their mentor, Vivek Prakash, Director, Engineering, NetApp. Over to you, Prakash. Hi, I'm Vivek Prakash, Engineering Director at NetApp. I've been mentoring Neuropixel through this cohort. Fashion industry is set to take a new leap by bringing in concepts like virtual ions, leverage synthetic and pre-selected models for different apparel displays. This is going to be a big boon for fashion e-commerce players 
where apparels can be shown in any shape and size as per the choice of the customer. This will also help them unlock the revenue, which in current environment is lost because of days and weeks spent in the cataloging process. Neuropixel is at the forefront in solving this problem for the industry by using their complex AI modeling and eventually providing a SaaS platform. Different vendors can leverage this to give end user a customized experience of the apparel, which can be based on parameters like ethnicity, height, facial expression, etc., of synthetic or pre-selected models. They have been partnering with Mintra, India's biggest fashion e-commerce portal, to build their training set. I wish Arvind and Namrathendu all the best in their venture. We'd like to invite them to give us more details. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Arvind, and it's a privilege to be here. The people you see on your screen never wore these clothes, and these are not real people. We are Neuropixel.ai, a deep tech startup at the intersection of fashion e-commerce and computer vision, and we're on a mission to amplify digital storefronts. E-commerce is a visual experience. What you see on the left here are high quality catalog images shot with international models in a professional studio environment. However, what you see on the right is what most catalog images look like on mass market platforms. These may be flat lay shots, mannequin shots, or even hanger shots, and they all will suffer from lower engagement and consequently lower conversion and lower revenues for these sellers. Let's understand the reason behind the gap. The process of cataloging apparel is one of the most operationally intensive and painful processes that every e online seller undertakes on a daily basis. It typically involves models, photographers, makeup artists and stylists who all come together to execute the shoot. The images taken goes for post-production editing thereafter and coupled with logistics, this means it's a 2-3 to three week process with about 10-15% to 15 reshoots. The biggest problem though is costs. For a lot of smaller retailers, they can't afford the rupees 600 it takes to catalog a single item. Secondly, the process time of two to three weeks in a high seasonality industry like fashion almost always means money left on the table. Also, sellers in tier two and tier three cities won't have access to or the ab ability to afford international models, which will typically have a higher conversion. Consequently, SME retailers get stuck in a vicious cycle where they're not able to extract as much revenue per view as their larger, well-funded counterparts. With Neuropixel.ai, we're not just improving the process, we're changing the game. Our clients will be able to shoot any apparel on a mannequin, upload that to our SaaS platform, where you'll be able to select the model you want, select the poses you want, and download high-resolution catalog images on the fly quickly and cost-effectively. What you see on the left here is a ghost mannequin image, which is quick and cheap to shoot. What you see on the right here is a product of our beta algorithm. We're incredibly proud of the level of detail that we've been able to preserve and the drapes and falls of the fabric. Secondly, we'll not just be able to shoot it on real models, but on completely synthetically generated human models, which look very, very similar to real people. This makes the process extremely quick and it gives the power to the merchandiser to get the perfect model for each apparel. We'll be able to customize granular features like facial expression or skin tone, and even pose, size, hairstyle, and hair color. Now, what this means is that we will be able to reduce process times by a factor of 10. We will also reduce costs by at least 40%. We will democratize the access to international models for even the smallest of sellers and eliminate all reshoots. The net result will be that SME retailers will be able to compete much more effectively with larger, well-funded players in the industry. We don't just do faster, cheaper, easier cataloging. We also want to enable the next frontier of e-commerce personalization. So far, it, 
all e-commerce platforms personalize the homepage experience, the sort order, push notifications, SMS messages, and remarketing campaigns. But the most important factor in a consumer's purchase decision, catalog images have never been able to be personalized. With our technology, as you press small, medium, or large, the size of the model can change accordingly, enabling much more relatable imagery. We can also change the ethnicity to resemble that of the customers, which we envision will improve conversion by at least 10 to 15%. In addition to catalog image-based personalization, we're also going to enable hyper-personalization at a one-to-one -one user level. With our technology, customers will be able to upload a photograph and visualize any apparel on themselves, the best model for improving their purchase decision. What you see on the left is my co-founder Amrit trying on an assortment of apparel and me in a slightly different pose as well. What this will enable is 10 to 15% higher conversion, a reduction in return rates, which is a hair on fire problem for all e-commerce sellers by at least one third and also enabling users to create highly shareable user-generated content, which will result in a lot more organic traffic for these platforms. In terms of traction and GTM, we're partnered with my old employer, Mintra, where they are actually helping us build the training set, which is an integral part of such a machine learning algorithm. And we, in return, we will be deploying it for them at an extremely discounted rate. Our first rung of clients will be sellers on platforms like Odan, Misho, Kootloot and Trell, where we will be able to easily add a definitive visual upgrade to the kind of catalog images they have presently. In about 9 to 12 months, we want to target platforms like Zalando and Zalora, where we have already had first level discussions and they're very interested to see what the output quality of our solution would look like. To introduce myself, I have 10 years of experience across consulting and e-commerce. Most recently, I spent three years at Mintra on revenue growth. My partner Amritendu is the brains behind our operation. He's completed his PhD from IISC in image processing using machine learning. With him, we have a pool of highly qualified researchers, all from IISC, including two PhDs. We also have a creative head who has joined us recently. We're also backed by some wonderful advisors who have experience across e-commerce, startups, and machine learning. In addition, we've also had the backing of a few wonderful accelerators in Entrepreneur First, ISP D-Labs, Huddle, and now NetApp Accelerator. To close things off, I want to talk about our latest bet. What you see on the left is a synthetic influencer called Lil Michaela. The company behind them, Brud, is worth well over $200 million in just three to four years. This is a very popular phenomenon in the US and China, but the rest of the world is a blank canvas. What you see on the right here is Maya, our first virtual influencer for the Indian market. We will be launching her in just three months. We are neuropixel.ai and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. That was our last startup, neuropixel.ai. And thank you very much, Arvind, for making that happen. And those ladies and gentlemen were our eight phenomenal startups. Let's give them a nice big virtual round of applause for each and every one of them. The eight startups, along with the team from NetApp Accelerator, have put in a massive amount of time, hard work, and resources to get to this stage. And they deserve every bit of our appreciation. So send in your comments on the chat box and encourage all eight startups. Once again, fantastic work teams. Honestly, super job. Audience, a friendly reminder, if you have any questions to the team, you can use the Q&A tab on your screen to post said questions. I've said this before, we're saying it again. To those of you looking to get in touch with the startups, you can also use the chat window or drop us an email and we will help in connecting you. Also, do refer to our handbook, which is located in the Handouts tab on the top right side of your screen. We witnessed eight amazing startups today, and it's time to move on to the award ceremony, where three of these eight startups will be awarded under the following categories. Category number one, Best Growth Strategy Award. Category number two, Most Innovative Product. Category number three, Investor's Choice Award. But before we move on to these awards for the evening, and while our judges decide on the winners, I have a final and a pertinent question for all of you. All I would like you to do is provide your opinion in the poll tab on the top right side of your screen. For you, the audience, which startup had the most impressive pitch for today? Leave your answers on the poll and obviously, we'll give you a few moments to do so, maybe about 
30 seconds. And while we give you that little 30 second breather, I'm going to drop a beat. Here we go. Hope you enjoyed that little breather and that change of pace. But now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the awards. I would like to let you know that the awards were finalized by an eminent panel of NetApp mentors who looked into each startup, their strengths, the segments they operate, and how they have grown and moved forward in their time with NetApp. Obviously, and this goes without saying, but I will say it nonetheless, the adjudication on these awards were not an easy one. If you watched the presentation segment of the startups, you will know that this wasn't an easy task for the judges. No matter the outcome from this event, NetApp Accelerator wishes the very best for each startup and truly hopes their journey forward is a fruitful one. People of the internet, it's awards time and that means you need to keep your fingers ready on those keyboards and congratulate our winners as and when they are being announced. The first category is the best growth strategy. Speed matters in life as well as in technology. How fast can a company grow is determined not by who we are competing with but how we are executing it. Let us welcome Anil Nama, CIO, Control S, Data Centers and Cloud for C to do the honors of announcing the first winner. Over to you, Anil. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I am Anil Nama. I am the CIO for Cloud for C and Control S Data Centers Limited. Control S Data Centers, as you would know, is one of the largest uh, data center provider in India. We have recently gone live uh, with a GIS system which allows us to provide 300 megawatts scaling up to 800 megawatts in our Mumbai DC campus. With more than 20,000 racks as on date in expanding our campuses and edge, uh, control S is poised for this India data center growth. cloud 4 c on the other side is, was incubated by control S in 2016. It is now present in 22 nations uh, worldwide. It has gone on to become uh, one of the largest uh, HANA Enterprise Cloud provider, as well as SAP RICE provider. And it supports core banking from various ISVs and different other cutting edge solutions. It is also the expert MSP of Azure one of the top two partners qualified. We have also expanded Cloud4C into uh, handling workloads on AWS, uh, GCP, and OCP. Our NetApp relationship has been uh, quite fulfilling. They have enabled us uh, to support our customers, both in private cloud in the data centers, for these SAP, uh, banking, BFSI workloads, and also on top of the cloud where our demanding customers require the highest uptime. We look forward to this fruitful relationship. As part of their accelerated program, I am pleased to announce that Data Motive has won this award. Thank you. Thank you, Anil, and a massive congratulations to the winners, Data Motive. I'm sure that was much deserved. Massive congratulations to each and every one of you. But it's time to move on to the second category of the awards, Most Innovative Product. Innovation need not always be what is new in the market, but what is needed at that moment in time. The perfect storm of market timing and expertise is what creates the most innovative product. To do these honors of announcing the award-winning team in this category, let's welcome 
Vasanthi Ramesh, Vice President Engineering, NetApp, to announce the startup with the most innovative product. Over to you, Vasanthi. Hi all, I'm pleased to announce the most innovative product award to NetObjects. NetObjects is a versatile digital asset management and services platform. They have built a meta ecosystem that is secure, robust, and scalable using IT, AI, and blockchain for tokenized NFT. Their platform today has an active customer base encompassing various industries. I congratulate NetObjects and the NetApp mentors, Gaurav Makar and Priyesh Ramaya for this award and wish many more awards and accolades for their innovative platform. Thank you, Vasanthi, and congratulations to the winners, NetObjects. You should really be very proud of the amazing work you've put in. For those of you all tuning in, please use those keyboards, go clickety-click, and send them your congratulations. They definitely deserve it. It's time to move on to the next category, Investor's Choice Award. We've covered innovation and growth. These are addressed by the fuel called capital. Investors play an important role in the growth of a startup. Similar to a coach mentoring a young sportsperson, I'd like to invite Vinod Shankar, co-founder and CEO of VitaCloud.io, acquired by Apollo Telehealth, to announce the Investor's Choice Startup Award. Over to you, Vinod. Hello, uh, my name is Vinod Shankar and I'm a product leader and ex-entrepreneur. What a pleasure it is to return to this demo day. Thank you, NetApp, Madurema, and the entire team. Uh, my association with NetApp started back in 2017 when our digital health startup, Vita Cloud, was selected to be part of the very first cohort. And I'm so glad to have been part of that accelerator program. Uh, I believe NetApp was a key lever and catalyst that would uh, help us to enrich the product increase our visibility and amplify the overall proposition. Uh, Vita Cloud went on to get acquired by the Apollo Health Group, where the other founders and I have held leadership positions for the past couple of years. In today's demo day, I wish to congratulate all eight startups for having made this incredible journey so far for your awesome products. And I wish you the very best going forward. And I'm very excited to be the one presenting the award for the investor's choice to Firevisor. Thank you, Vinod, and congratulations to the winner, Firevisor. Massive round of applause to you and the team. Very well deserved. And more importantly, a huge round of applause, like a digital round of applause to all three winners. Congratulations to the three of y'all. As this event slowly draws to a close, may I request you, the audience, to use your keyboards once again and send a positive vibe to the startups that did not win today. They too have put in so much of strife to get to where they are today and we want to acknowledge them for their amazing journey thus far. Let us all give them a huge digital round of applause once again and you can use your keyboards and send them a lot of love. For the audience members, once again, you'll be receiving details of your saplings on an email. So don't forget to check your email inbox. And before I leave your screens for good, another friendly reminder that if you have any questions to the team, you can use the Q&A tab on your screen to post said questions. Those of you looking to get in touch with the startups, you can also use the chat window or drop us an email and we'll help you in getting in touch with them. You can also download the handbook by clicking on the top right side of the screen. Applications are currently open for the 10th cohort launching in March 2022. To know more, visit startup.netapp.in. Thank you once again for joining us on this virtual demo day. My name is Vineet Vincent and I have been your presenter and host for the day. And on behalf of the NetApp team, I'm requesting you to please take care of yourselves, your friends and your family during these different and trying times. We hope to see you all in the best of health in the next event. Until then, signing off.
Thank you.